This episode brought to you by Stamps.com. Why go to the store to get stamps when you can have them printed right at home for your convenience? Also brought to you by ExpressVPN, the best VPN there is. Take back your online privacy today. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy. Remember it so you don't have to. I do sometimes wonder how many of us were introduced to classic stories via Disney films. I know I never heard of Jungle Book, Pinocchio, or The Little Mermaid until I saw their animated version. And like all who read them afterwards, I was enchantingly scarred for the rest of my days. So it is kind of cool that over 20 years later, Tarzan probably has the same effect. in 1999 after a slew of films that were not meeting the numbers Disney was used to. Tarzan was a smash hit with critics and audiences who were both delighted but also surprised. On the one hand, everybody knew who Tarzan was through pop culture. So the idea to redefine him in animation, especially when, like I said, Disney wasn't hitting their usual string of hits, did seem kind of risky. It quickly made sense though when people realized what animation could bring to it. Talking animals, a man swinging through the jungle, action, romance, it already seemed tailor-made for Disney. Almost a little too much, but we'll get to that in a bit. With that said, how does this film hold up over two decades later? Is it a timeless masterpiece on par with some of Disney's finest, or is it... Almost a little too much, but we'll get to that in a bit. Well, let's swing on in and take a closer look. This is Disney's Tarzan. The film opens with a pretty badass intro, showing Tarzan as a baby with his parents surviving a shipwreck. At the same time, we see a family of apes who also have a child, and through visuals alone, we're shown how similar the two are. Oh, and also with songs by Phil Collins. Uh, I'll let the hate grow a little bit before I open that. The animation, the orchestration, it's a solid opening. I especially love how this leopard face transitions from day with Tarzan to night with the apes, with his eye being seen as the sun and the moon, showing he's about to take something away from both families. Ah! On that note, not even three minutes in and Diddy Kong becomes Coco Krispies. Gotta love a movie that introduces child death before a character even gets a line. Sometime later, the ape's mother, Kala, played by Glenn Close, hears another baby crying and follows it to a pretty bitchin' resort. Christ, getting shipwreck results in better rooms than at Sandals. Again, not even five minutes in, and we have the body count of a complete family. This is how you G, 2022. This is how you G! Mm -hmm. But the leopard is still there, having not eaten anyone. I'm not entirely sure what his plan was. But she saves the baby and takes him to her husband, Kerchak, played by Lance Hendrickson. I mean, what the heck is it anyway? Ah, you know, he's not so bad once you get used to him. Same can't be said for you. Kerchak, I know he'll be a good son. I said he could stay. That doesn't make him my son. I saw what happened when my British uncle tried it. Results in earworms! I love when she tries to sing this lullaby like it totally wasn't written to be a pop song first. Stop your crying. It'll be alright. Just take my hand. We'll get to it when we get to it. It results in a song much shorter than I remember. It's not even a minute long. And the baby is named Tarzan, growing into a little boy voiced by Alex D. Lins. Oh, Mom, they're no fun. Why do you see me be a leopard? I don't know, you got bits of parent in your teeth? <laughs> it's over 20 years old, come on! He befriends an ape named Turk, played by the woman who held the late 90s hostage. Know the other one, Rosie O'Donnell. Kala and I have been so worried. Oh, thank you so much for finding him. Go check. Run. Okay, admittedly, Rosie has been an easy punchline over the years, but I have to admit, she's been good in a lot of stuff. I'll totally acknowledge if you cast her in the right role, she can bring a lot to a performance. 
I say that because none of that is represented here. Okay, everybody, move aside, out of my way. Best friend coming through. That would be me. It's obvious they wanted something similar like what they did with Robin Williams, James Woods, or Ellen DeGeneres. Comedians who can elevate already hilarious writing and even make unfunny lines funny. Not only is her dialogue horrible in this, but her performance actually makes it worse. The fun <laughs> has arrived! Thank you very much. That was Elvis. You like that because it's Elvis. They played that on all the commercials like it was the funniest scene. Coming only to theaters June 18th. Thank you very much. Now on video and Disney DVD. Thank you very much. And you know what? It probably was her funniest scene. To be fair though, a lot of the comedy isn't that great early on. It feels like they're trying to capture how kids talked at the time and they just didn't know how to do it. You know, 90% of Disney Channel's live action programming. Stop it in yourself! Stop it in yourself! Stop. Sort of a long, it's involved. Oh, that one hurt him. Uh, not uh, Pogs, Furbies, Game Boy Color, just tell us what to say! Don't get me wrong, it makes sense to have something light after such a heavy opening, but weirdly enough, its sequel balances comedy and drama in his childhood a lot better. And yes, that probably will be the only time I ever say a Disney DVD sequel to something better than the original. You almost killed someone! But it was an accident! I don't entirely skip out on the drama, though. After he's embarrassed by his friends and told by Kerchak he'll never be one of them, he tries covering himself in mud to look more like an ape. It's moments like these that show, despite its hiccups, it does do the important stuff right. What do you feel? My heart. Come here. <laughs> Your heart. See? We're exactly the same. We both have heartbeats, we both eat our own shit. They cut that part out. That wasn't mud he was putting on. Tarzan decides to show Kerchak he's the best ape ever. I saw Shia LaBeouf do this once, only it was more animated. He grows up over the years to, you guessed it, another Phil Collins song. Okay, let's do it. I made a big deal a long time ago. I do not like the Phil Collins songs in this movie. I've poked fun, I've imitated his voice, I've mocked them over and over and over, but there's two very important things to realize before you kill me. One, I totally admit, I was playing it up a little bit. Maybe I was riding the hate train that blamed Canada lost the Oscar to him and it was by far the better song. And he became a bit of an easy punching bag. Especially for the people who wrote Blame Canada. I used to be in a band too, Genesis, but all those bastards did was hold me back and hold me back. The truth is though, Phil Collins did exactly what Disney asked him to do, put Phil Collins songs in their movie. And objectively speaking, if I just heard these songs on the radio, I probably think they were fine. So yes, I was playing to my inner troll a bit because seeing people get so pissed off about this just made me laugh. I'm sorry, I can't help it. The truth is, I don't hate Phil Collins, and I don't hate these songs. But that brings me to the second important thing. I still don't like the Phil Collins songs in this movie. On their own, they're fine, but in the film, I think it does a disservice. This is a story about a man torn between two worlds. He's confused, he's angry, he's excited, he's afraid. All of these emotions would make great songs for him to sing about, and have in other musicals. But according to one of the directors, I did not want Tarzan to sing. I just couldn't see this half-naked man sitting on a branch breaking out into song. I thought it would be ridiculous. No disrespect, I think he directed a very solid movie, but that's one of the stupidest things I ever heard. Is the realism of someone bursting into song ruined by this? Is the dramatic weight of this scene or this scene weakened because this guy sings a note? I'd actually be more shocked if a guy dressed like this in the woods didn't sing. My guess is Disney was trying to grow up their audience a bit by getting away from musicals, as after this, they almost entirely disappeared for a while. And having these vague songs that can connect to the movie, but more importantly play on the radio without any context, was more important to them. Because of this, you can remove these songs from the movie and practically miss nothing. The exact same emotions and story are gotten across with or without them. Watch this scene with Phil Collins' narration replaced with the musical score. Maybe 
I'm nuts, but that felt a lot more powerful. Because you're reading the emotions, the music, the body language. Nobody's vaguely telling you what to feel. You're feeling it naturally. Singing is fine, but if it's not the character telling you what they're thinking, but rather a narrator telling you what a character is thinking, it creates a barrier between you and that character, and it feels less personal. It'd be like Celine Dion singing how Elsa and Anna want to build a snowman. Or Justin Timberlake singing how the Mongreals don't talk about Bruno. Or Randy Newman singing why Moses and Ramesses don't like each other. Moses is saying, let my people go. And Randy's telling you about Ramesses. Or Randy's that's even better. However, in Toy Story, that works okay. Newman's songs almost sound like a children's record that ties into these toys' emotions. Every time Phil Collins sings, I want everyone to look around shouting, what the hell is that? I get it if you like them, especially if you grew up with them. They're not bad songs. I just see this as a huge missed opportunity. Okay, so now that I've lost all of you, um, it is kind of a catchy song, isn't it? Now grown up and voiced by Tony Goldwyn. And yes, sometimes I do wish his inner bad guy from Ghost would pop up. Don't make a habit of that, okay? There are other ways of getting attention, you know? What the hell is wrong with you, huh? Is everything a joke? He perfects his skills and moves more like a skateboarder than he does the traditional vine swinger of the other films. This so easily could have gone wrong. If you told me in Disney's Tarzan he was gonna skateboard through the trees, I'd say you're extremely dead on arrival. But the animators know how the trees in the jungle are shaped and it makes him move in a way where you can tell this is what he's been surrounded by his whole life. Visually, I'd say it's the most ingenious thing in the movie and really helps separate him from every other version. No other Tarzan does or even can move like him. He even encounters the leopard who killed his parents and gets revenge! Though I'm not even sure he's aware he got it. Yeah, it's a cool fight, but it's missing the gratification of knowing he killed the bastard that killed his folks. So it does kind of feel like a little something is missing. Don't worry, I'll fix it up. You killed my parents. What are you talking about? You made me first. How childish can you get, huh? Better. <laughs> he gives the famous Tarzan yell, which appears was dubbed by Brian Blessed, but I think that's a rumor. It was clearly Carol Burnett. And a new breed of animal gets his attention. Ugh! Teddy, what's all the hullabaloo about? Commonly known as... Hey man, you want some stuff? You want some stuff? I got some good stuff for you. You know what I got here? You know what I got here? Stamps. Yeah, you like stamps, don't you? Yeah, oh, you like stamps, because let me tell you, time is money. Don't we see that with repeated trips to the post office? With stamps.com, you can skip the trip and focus on how to take your small business to the next level. Stamps.com lets you print official U.S. postage right from your computer and saves you money in the process. Oh, so you can spend less time at the post office and more time making your customers happy. Yeah, you like those stamps, man. You like them. You want to know why I like them? Because it saves me so much time and so much money. It's so convenient. I can just print them out right from my printer. Oh, yeah, that printer. For over 20 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. Yeah, Stamps.com gives you access to all the post office and UPS shipping services you need right from your computer. And discounts you can't find anywhere else, like up to 40% off USPS rates and 76% off UPS. Yeah, you want some of that? You want some of that? Whether you're an office sending invoices, a side hustle Etsy shop, or a full-blown warehouse shipping out orders, Stamps.com will make your life easier. Get this, get this, all you need is a computer and standard printer. No special supplies or equipment. Man, you're up running in minutes printing official postage for any letter, any package, anywhere you want to send. Stop overpaying with shipping, man, with Stamps.com. Sign up at Stamps.com slash Nostalgia for a special offer that includes a four-week free trial, free postage, oh, and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts at Stamps.com slash Nostalgia for a four-week free trial, free postage, and a digital scale. Let me tell you something else you might be interested in. I got ExpressVPN in there. It's in there! You know it's not fair, the fact that Netflix hides thousands of shows and movies from you based on your location. And then they have the nerve 
to increase their prices on you. That's right, man. They just raised the prices on you again, man. Ugh. Now you could just cancel your subscription and protest, or you could be smart about it and make sure you're getting your full money's worth by using ExpressVPN like I do. See, you might not know that what's on Netflix in your country is completely different from what someone in the UK or Japan has in theirs. Using ExpressVPN, I can control which country I want Netflix to think I'm in. Yeah, ExpressVPN has over 90 countries to choose from. They're all in here! So every time I run out of stuff to watch, I just switch to another country to unlock new shows. Right now, I'm watching Black Books. It's not on US Netflix, but with just one tap of a button, ExpressVPN lets me change my location to the UK. And here's the best part. Ooh! It ain't just with Netflix. You can use ExpressVPN to unlock shows on other streaming services too. I like to use it to watch BBC iPlayer. It's free and only available in the UK. ExpressVPN is also super fast and works on your phone, laptop, even smart TVs. So you can watch your shows on the big screen with zero buffering. What accent has me talking through my teeth like this? Stop paying full price for streaming services and only get access to a fraction of their content. Get your money's worth at expressvpn.com slash nostalgia critic. Don't forget to use my link so you can get three extra months free. That's EXP. R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash nostalgia critic. Go to expressvpn.com slash nostalgia critic to learn more. What else you want? You want my coat? You can take my coat. Yeah, take it. It's all yours. Now I'm cold. ExpressVPN will keep me warm. New year means a new game to play for Disney December. I'm gonna be playing Spider-Man for the PS4 every Friday on Twitch. We have content six days a week, so come check us out. Hope to see you then. So an expedition led by Jane Porter, played by Minnie Driver, with her father, played by Nigel Hawthorne, and Clayton, played by Gaston if he ate Boss Nass, explore the jungle looking for gorillas, but Jane accidentally pisses off some baboons. Tarzan swings in to save the day. <laughs> so you may have put together Jane is definitely a damsel in distress in this movie. Even Tarzan rolls his eyes at her sometimes, but it does honestly kind of make sense. This is the Victorian era, she's a fish out of water, and she does pull her weight the more the film continues. Particularly showing Tarzan about the modern world, and Tarzan showing her about the jungle world. It helps them both grow as characters, it helps them grow as a couple, and it leads to a few good laughs. Put me down! Put me down! <laughs> no, pick me up, pick me up. I also do like that in a Disney film, Jane is kind of average looking. Where Disney usually designs their women as absolutely flawless, she looks like an everyday person. Her nose is a little weird, she's got a bit of an overbite, her hair's always messed up. It's nice, it feels more relatable. I like when a character doesn't need to be chiseled perfection. If anything, I think we're getting enough of that from Tarzan. <laughs> Speaking of which, the action scenes with him, as you'd imagine, are also really fun. When it came out, a lot of critics said it moved too fast, but now, years later, it's on par with a modern animated action sequence. Showing in some ways, it was ahead of its time. Even if Tarzan is socially a little behind the times, yeah, I wonder what Disney would think of some of these shots of him not understanding social cues. <laughs> How I'd love it if they ran this on the Disney Channel and this is where they put the commercial. Oh dear. We'll be right back with the Disney Channel premiere. I really like this callback to Tarzan comparing his hands to an ape, now comparing it to Jane, showing he's finally found someone of his own kind. But with how his fingers have been all these years, I think it would go more like this. Also, tell me how the hell this works. Tarzan. Tarzan. <laughs> yeah, the apes speak in grunts, so unless they named him in English and they talk like ooh, 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 Tarzan, ooh, 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 ooh. this doesn't make any sense. But I don't care, it's a pretty charming scene. <laughs> His ability to imitate sounds perfectly is also a nice touch that I'd buy he pick up living his whole life in the jungle. Clayton! Clayton! Just add Steve Gutenberg and we can finally make Police Academy 8 happen! The apes discover the human's camp and it seems like this where you remind yourself, oh yeah, kids movie. I feel something happening here! We're not the gargoyles from Hunchback, but at least we're not the gargoyles from Hunchback. 
I guess I could be annoyed by this section, but honestly, I'm still stuck on how wrong that looks without a face. It's like seeing Neo without a mouth, it's just creepy. The apes and humans meet each other, but they get off to a rocky start. Fascinated by Jane's tatas, I mean the human world, Tarzan returns and each shows off more about where they come from. They hope to use Tarzan as a means of understanding apes better, but you'll be shocked by this, Clayton wants to sell the apes for money. Why? For 300 pounds sterling a head. Yeah, despite being played by a great actor, Clayton is kind of a basic bitch villain. If I can teach a parrot to sing God Save the Queen, I can certainly teach this savage a thing or two. It's like they want the comedy of Gaston and the plotting of Frollo, but those two are so different and so don't go together that they create a non-memorable antagonist. There's only one reason I think anyone remembers this villain, and yeah, we'll get to that in due time. <laughs> but Kerchak misreads the situation and tries to kill him, forcing Tarzan to turn on his own father. You betrayed us all. I feel like in a 90s kids movie about people and nature, we can trust humanity. Knowing Tarzan is confused, Kala finally shows him where he came from, bringing him to his parents' home. Is this me? There's very little talking here, and thank God no Phil Collins songs, because the animation really does carry all the emotion. The movement and expressions are really wonderful. I just want you to be happy, whatever you decide. He puts on his father's finest GQ suit and decides to go with Jane back to England, only to discover Clayton isn't leaving without the gorillas. I have you to thank, my boy. Couldn't have done it without you. Yep, just like the villain from Atlantis, this multi-billion dollar company is trying to tell you being greedy is bad. Oh, you are an animal! Tarzan's friends break them out just in time to stop Clayton from killing his family. Eh, yeah, most of them. Not bad for a human. Tarzan's arm is shot, so he has a hard time fighting Clayton off, but thankfully Clayton does half the work for him. And I'm sure a lot of people have said this, but out of all the Disney villain deaths, this one leaves a pretty damn big impact with people. Oof. Good damn! This is how you G, 2022! This is how you G! Okay, I'll give it to you. You just elevated yourself to Oliver and Company villain. You were pretty standard, but at least you gave a pretty badass death. Speaking of which, Kerchak is on his way out too and tells Tarzan to take his place in the circle of life. I mean, look after the bag. Take care of them. My son. I called you my son. That doesn't make you my son. The next day, Jane leaves for back home, slowly realizing she might be home already. Jane, dear, I can't help feeling that you should stay. It's the Victorian era. It's easier to say you drowned than you didn't get married. Jane stays behind, woman handles the shit out of Tarzan, and I guess Papa decides he should stay behind too. Cause that's what every woman wants, stranded on a desert island with a practically naked man and your dad. Yay. Tell them that you never found us, eh? After all, people get lost in the jungle every day. What's the worst that could happen? Three horny as hell women searching for us in a DVD sequel? Perhaps you could put it back in its cage now. Cage? He's got a cage? Uh, uh Phil Collins, tell us what to think! <laughs> and because we really want you to think you just saw the next Lion King, here's the title at the end like Lion King. <laughs> So there you go, that was Disney's Tarzan, and over two decades later, it does honestly still stand out as a pretty unique version. I don't think it's a Disney game changer like Snow White or Beauty and the Beast, but it's still a pretty decent movie. It does have some problems, which holds it back from being a great film, but what it gets right is really imaginative and so lends itself to the world of animation. It is hard to think of the story without thinking of it being animated now. The struggles Tarzan goes through are interesting, the action is a lot of fun, the characters aren't flawless, but they do keep your attention. And even the songs, like I said, aren't horrible, they'd just be better if they focused more on the characters singing, in my opinion. With all that said, what are your thoughts on this years later? Did you see it as an adult? Did you grow up with it? Is this the definitive Tarzan and just how wrong was I about Phil Collins? Let me know what you think about Disney's Ape Man and how he holds up all these years later. I'm a nostalgia critic guy, remember? So you don't have to. Oh, that one hurt him.
Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out, and this week's charity is a, another recommendation. Thank you so much for that. It is the uh, Catawba Land Conservancy. Uh, they conserve land in North Carolina. By conserving land, they are improving water and air quality by protecting wildlife habitats, uh, farmland, and open natu uh, natural spaces as their landscape continues to change in the rapidly urbanizing Greater Charlotte metro region. Uh, the natural places they value as a community and define this region's character are steadily diminishing. They are dedicated to helping balance the inevitable growth of their communities with the protection of those places that improve their quality of life and provide their communities with many ecological and environmental benefits. So thank you so much for that recommendation. Check out the site. It shows all the various uh, things that they do and the ways you can help. And these just look like beautiful, beautiful spots. They're definitely worth checking out. Uh, see if you can donate or again, uh, uh, this might be one that you can volunteer at. If not, just share the word about it. You know, just again, just people doing so much good out there. The more you can share it, I think, the world to be a better place to live. There you go. It's my Tommy was so out of nowhere quote. <laughs> so that's about it. I'll see you next time, guys. Take care.